the crossover, as mentioned, splits the incoming audio from, say, a CD or uh, an iPod, uh, not that we really have iPods anymore, uh, into the various uh, bands of frequencies that are relevant uh, and optimal for the drivers that are receiving them. So, for instance, as I said, the tweeter reproduces high frequencies, uh, and if you were to feed a low frequency into a tweeter, you would be quite likely to, to damage it or to, uh, to break it entirely. Um, so that's why we only want to feed the tweeter with high frequencies. Similarly, we ideally only want to feed mid-ranges uh, with mid-frequencies. -fre you can feed high frequencies to woofers and mid-ranges, uh, but they won't reproduce them very well. And we also don't want, uh, we want as little overlap as possible between the frequencies that uh, one driver is reproducing and the frequencies that another driver is reproducing. So we're trying to keep that overlap uh, as tight as possible, but still maintaining a good overall reproduction when the output from all three drivers acoustically combines. Uh, and so you can see that this diagram here basically shows you uh, some circuits. Um, the, the coil is uh, inductor and the two lines that are parallel, that's a capacitor, and the output shows you what sort of frequency ranges you would get from that filtering um, design. Um, so I've put here as an example, the A70 tweeter will be fed from the high pass output of, uh, of the crossover, uh, the A70 mid-range from the band pass output from um, for, for the for the mid range and for the subwoofer you you'll be looking at the low pass output or high cut for the subwoofer. So <clears throat> without going into detail, there are various different types of crossover. You can have active crossover, in which case you'll need a power supply. Uh, you can have a digital co crossover. Uh, a digital crossover will s take the audio, convert it into the digital domain uh, if it's not already in the digital domain. Uh, undertake all the filtering there, not using components like capacitors and inductors, uh, but then when it uh, converts it back into uh, an electrical signal, when it feeds the tweeter, you could argue that at that point it becomes uh, an analog signal as well, again. Uh, there are various advantages and disadvantages that are usually related to cost and flexibility, um, but actually um, you see passive crossovers quite often. And in fact, there's a passive crossover within the A70 for the tweeter, even though we use a digital crossover uh, between the subwoofer and the mid-range. 